Right, let's just check out the volume levels. We're looking good. And check out the map of the route. So I'll push this to one side. So there is our route for the day. So first leg over from Edwards is over towards uh, Kern Valley. But we won't be going there for quite some time yet. Okay, uh, first things first, let's go and get some fuel into the aeroplane. So we are at Edwards, obviously you can hear things happening in the background. Yeah, there's a fighter jet of some description going past at extreme speed. We won't be going quite as fast in the Dornier, but we'll see how we get on. So you can see there's a C5, oh no sorry, it says C17 parked in front of us. There's a Galaxy over there, another C17, uh, another C17. There's a uh, B2 over there, another C17 behind it. Hi, K Hi Jacobs, just seen your comment in the live stream chat. So, should we go and get this thing fired up? Uh, I'm going to go and use some keyboard shortcuts to make this easier. I've just invented some keyboard shortcuts for myself. So, batteries go on, anti-collision lights go on. Then we come back down. And we'll start the left engine first. So, we're watching the N2 gauge come up. When it gets to 18%, we go main engine left. So just waiting for the engine to come up. Doesn't take too long. Hopefully it won't. Okay, uh, oh, three, come back. Start it on for the right engine. We're watching the N2. Coming through 18%, so transfer fuel and it should carry on round, and it does. There we go. Tim says hi. So, well, the major thing that I've learned since the, um, the first look video I did was yes, I had missed some switches <laughs> in the cockpit, which would have spun up the, um, the lift engines. Okay, so now we have engine number two. So let's come back down the cockpit. Turn the starter off, close the lid. We're going to calibrate the altimeter while we're here. And we're going to turn some fuel pumps on. And this time we will remember to do the switches, not those ones. These two. And then let's go and have a look overhead. So we'll go and put the landing lights on, just so we're well lit up on our way around the... Yeah, the taxi lights don't actually work in this, which is a bit of a shame. Is the plane a bit of a gimmick, or will people actually fly it? It's just a bit different. So, so what we might do is go and taxi out away from the rest of the aircraft before we go and do anything with it. 
so let's go and open the engines gently and we'll put the head tracking online there we go I'm just going to get away from the rest of the aircraft before I take off. So obviously we can take off vertically in this. It's not very expensive, the aircraft. And once you get the hang of it, with flying it, it's not too bad either. So there's a Galaxy parked over there. B-52 Right, let's get away from the rest of the aircraft We'll take off from this taxiway It's as good a place as any Okay, wheel brakes on, flaps extended, you see the flaps extending there, then we will switch on co-pilot mode which means the co-pilot was going to assist us now, so you can see the, um, the lift engines have opened up, and let's keep an eye on these dials on the far side, so if we then open up the lift engines interesting check something here I think we're just too heavy to take off vertically so I did put some fuel in remember let's see let's test that theory out while we're on the live stream let's go and take some of that fuel back out Yeah, look, we're just light enough now to get off the floor. Okay, so we just need to be careful with how much fuel we've got.
just getting a feel for it really. Let's go and descend down and have a look at some of these other aircraft that are down here. I've still got the gear down at the moment. Okay, let's lift ourselves away. It's very cool, isn't it? It just about goes backwards. You don't get much rotational control. I noticed that when I was playing around with it the other day. Whereas the Harrier had lots of rotational control. So whether that's just a limitation of the simulator, you can kind of do it a little bit, but not much. Okay, should we go off and fly the the low level route then? Let's see how, how well it goes backwards actually. Just for a bit of fun. It doesn't really, does it? Doesn't like it. What about sideways? Do we get much crab crabbing control? Not really. Okay. moving towards forward now so we can disengage the lift engines we're now under normal control flaps can come up and we trim the aircraft for normal flight so let's have a look at where we are on the map yeah, so we need to turn out towards the mountains. So we need to be going 315 degrees or so to get to where we want to be going. And start trimming. Flaps are up. I think we're overspeeding it. Just looking at how fast we're going there, we're up at 350 knots. We lost quite a lot of elevator control there at high speed, so I'm going to stay off the throttle just a little bit. It doesn't surprise me that it's so quick in a straight line, because it has so much power. It's essentially got two Harrier engines, so two Pegasus engines with eight nozzles between them. So the front two nozzles on the Pegasus are just um, air from the, uh, the the fan and the rear two, which is why they have the shielding on them, are the ignited 
um, airflow from the you know from past the ignition chambers. So that's why they are much closer to the wing root or wing cord, I think you'd call it, so that they um, balance on the centre of gravity. So our first port of call is Lake Isabella, or is it Lake Isabel? I can never remember, let's kind of a quick look. It is Isabella. So it's not an antenna. I'm just reading the live stream comments. Test aircraft tend to have a very long extension on the nose, so the sensors for the airflow are out of the way of the rest of the um, turbulence, especially with an aircraft with um, a, how do you put this? A unique configuration like this. So the sensor suite is right at the end of that mast. You can take that off. So if you come into the tablet and have to do this options, and we have the, op the opportunity to hide. The nose count and it'll go away. Something else I haven't really looked at in any of the videos is actually going back down the end of the aircraft. It's quite cool, isn't it? it looks very real. So we're going to have nice weather today for this, some low hanging fog here and there. So the beginning of the low level route starts at the dam alongside Lake Isabella. That's where we're heading at the moment. I'm just going to follow around the edge of these hills to sweep into Lake Isabella. Might be an idea to find out where the fuel quantity is just down here, look. There's quite a number of fuel tanks on this thing. If we have to stop somewhere on the way we can, Let's have a look at the route. So there's a couple of airfields up here that we could go and refuel that. Good visibility, isn't it?
Hey, running in towards Lake Isabella. And then we do the trip up towards... Let's go around this peak. Oh, we're not going to, we're not going to make it. The elevators have gone wrong. I th oh, how fast were we going? I'm going to cheat slightly. Yeah, we're going too fast, look. This is really touchy then. So I'm doing, I'm doing all of this hard work so none of you guys have to. So if we pull the speed back, do we, when do we get elevators back? So we've got no elevators. 250 knots, basically. So if you go to 300, you start to lose elevators. The closer you get to 350 knots, you almost completely lose elevators. Yeah, I'm almost lost now. That's full elevator back. So that's good to know before we go any further. So here's the entrance anyway into the low level route. So we'll have to keep the speed down. You can see here, look, if I pull back, look how much effect it's having. If I pull the throttle back, wait for the speed to drop off, and we get elevators back. So we'll have to be mindful of that, of holding 250 knots on any of the more squirrely bits of the route. So I think we have to stay to the left. Yeah, we're going far too far over towards Kernville. We have to stay away from Kernville. That's a huge advantage of this having so much power. Is we can manoeuvre it around and climb if we need to. So it can sustain a climb at over 6,000 feet a minute, which is a bit insane, really. So we're looking for a feature out in front of us called the Needles. But it'd be behind this rock, we can't see it at the moment. the right direction, it's just some distance down here. Which is from outside. Could it have been thrown around by turbulence? So those are the needles up on top of that hilltop. So that's our turning point for the next leg. 
on the low level route. They're going a bit too fast again though. Have to be mindful of it. could all go wrong in a big hurry. Um, see, I'm just reading the live stream comments there. I'll show you in a moment. The computer in the back is enormous. You have to remember in the 1960s computers were quite large. It was only really once Apollo had happened that computers got smaller. So, yeah, there's the computer and there's the um, batteries for it. Yeah, Apollo brought with it a huge step forwards in miniaturization of computers. So once we reach the needles, we turn right to 40 degrees out towards Owens Lake. It does get affected a lot by turbulence, but I think it's quite windy out there. What's the wind saying on that map? Oh, it's only saying 10 knots. I guess it could be kicking off the um, hilltops and pushing us around. How are we doing for fuel? I have no idea. I don't think we're going to make it all the way around with the fuel we have, but we'll try. Just keep an eye on it.
So Artix is saying there are no actuating parts in this aircraft for, vi for vertical takeoff landing. Yes, there are. Let's, I'll just show you then. Uh, so if we slow down. So I'm just bleeding off some airspeed so you can see the indicated airspeed's coming down. Well, as soon as we're slow enough, we'll engage flaps. Speed's coming off. Switch on the computer. And if we look outside now, we will see the lift engines have engaged. I'm having to use a small amount of the main engines to orient the aircraft easily, which is allowing me to put the nose up, which allows me to then bleed off airspeed. So you can see the airspeed's now coming off. Down to 50 knots, 40 knots. We're almost in the hover now. If we want to descend, we can. So I'm controlling both the main engines and the lift engines. It's an interesting one though, you need thrust on the main engines to, innate, to allow you to control the aircraft in, in terms of pitch, yaw and roll. So obviously if I put the nose up, it's almost like flying a helicopter, but not quite. Yeah. But the reason there's a computer there, if we look sideways, look what happens with the throttles. It's like this whole concert is going on between all the different controls. Okay, I'm just asking the aeroplane to start going forwards again. 100 knots. 120 knots. Start raising the flaps. and disengage the, the lift engines and we're back flying again. So there is a very precise sequence to follow to do everything in a controlled manner. Okay, so we're still en route for Owens Lake, which we'll see just over the top of this ridge. There'll be a steep drop down to it. Let's move the map while we're just on the way over. And then we follow along the valley floor, basically. Okay, so the visual reference point for the left turn, even though we know we're just flying up the valley, there's a washed out bridge somewhere down here, which I imagine is just this area here. Although this is saying, according to my map, it's over here somewhere. So 
Yeah, we're just about on top of it now, apparently where the where the washed out. We must be here, look. Yeah, it's here. Here's the visual reference point for the turn, if you do it super accurately. Okay, so we fly up the valley now. So we may work, put some speed on, I guess. Because we don't need much elevator control along here, do we? There's nothing in our way. wondering where our shadow is. Which way is the light hitting us? Oh, there it is, directly below. Okay. Um, what's the verdict on the aircraft? It's different. And I think that's what makes it interesting in a way. It's Don't expect you'll be able to throw it around like a fighter jet though, because it's not. It's a very unique aircraft of its, of its time. It was only ever an experimental aircraft. But it's great fun. Coming up past uh, Independence and what's the name of this airport? Manzanar. So basically, following up the, the valley here towards Big Pine. We turn, there's a, a dam on the edge of the lake here, Tinamaha Lake. So we turn over that lake out across the, the hilltops. flight directors on, did we? But we don't really need them. Because we're not using them for navigation at all, so we're just hand flying it today.
so I've got all the automatic stuff switched off. All the flying I've been doing has been manual. But the only difference is when you press the, the button here to go into co-pilot mode, as it calls it, um, you're controlling the levers in concert with each other automatically. So there's a mapping there. I'll show you it again a bit later on. But yeah, I've, I've got none of the assistance switched on at all. So that all the flying you've seen today has been completely manual. So if you weren't aware of this, the front bank of switches on the autopilot panel and the switch over there are for computer-aided assistance, a, a bit like with the helicopters in the simulator. So if you switch all of those on, well they, they, each one does different things, it's all covered in the documentation. So yeah, by default you don't really have any assistance. If I, just qu I'll just quickly slow down again, just to show you it, because I can't turn on the co-pilot until we're at a suitable speed for the lift fans to be opened. It takes them a moment or two to fire up as well. So we're bleeding airspeed off. This is the lake by the way. Yeah, this is the lake where we're turning anyway. So we got down to 150 knots, so we press this button, this green light comes on. That opens the lift fans. We can then go full power on the lift fans. Give the main engines a little bit of power, but when we engage those lift fans, look at the levers all moving together. They haven't actually fully engaged yet. See, so we've got two levers doing completely different things to the engines at the same time as each other. So we're back out to 200 knots, look, it's switched off. So you do have to quite carefully manage bringing the aircraft into control. So flaps are up. And we're back rolling again. So we're supposed to have turned, aren't we? We need to be careful about the lack of elevator authority. quite nice actually coming out on a longer turn because it gives us a, a longer sweep through the shallow part of the hills. The reason they I think they call this the co-pilot mode is you saw like all the levers flying around when we did it. It's obviously more than one person could easily handle. So if you think about it, what you've essentially got is a Harrier jump jet strapped to each wing. So you've got all of that thrust and vectoring to be to be controlled. So therefore, to, I guess to avoid any accidents, the pilot and co-pilot would be working together and announcing what they're doing and operating all the levers in concert with each other. So you're altering obviously not just the, the lift engines on the edge of the wings, but also the, um, the main, the Pegasus engines. And they can obviously, they have thrust and vectoring on top of the thrust from the so yeah, it's quite a difficult thing to get your head around. Yeah, 
are we doing? So we want to go left turn again. So we come down into the, the wash area, I think it calls it, in the visual reference point guide at waypoint 5 and we fly down towards there's a natural bridge in the canyon a bit further down of rocks. Okay. So while we're flying along See out the back. Let's go for the easiest route through. Seems to be up this mud float. And then basically follow down to, there's like a wash area down here. And there's a a scree part of the hills. To be mindful of the attitude indicator now because obviously we can't see horizon. So you get false flats everywhere. Very much a three-dimensional landscape. See, look, I think it's a lava flow below us from an ancient volcanic eruption. You can see the shapes of it in the, the ground and it goes all the way down here. So this lava flow obviously cut this channel originally and it peters out right in the bottom of here. 
but yeah, when you look down, you can see the patterns where it's solidified. It's very cool. Once you get further down, it looks even more impressive. Obviously, you get modern streams that have cut into it again. Send down a little bit, go closer to the floor. We have to be careful though about pulling out, so if, as you remember, the um, elevator control is not the best. So you can see the amount of stick I'm throwing to do minimal amounts of pitch change. So uh, everybody seems to be asking in the live stream, how is it? It's it's controllable. <laughs> That's the surprise. Okay, so let's slow down and we'll get, bring it to a hover out here over the the lava flow. So we're just dropping off the airspeed. Put the gear down as well to give ourselves some extra drag. And we'll go for engaging the lift engines. And let's go flat out on the lift engines. And we just bleed more speed off as we go. So I'm lifting the nose, trying not to get too much lift going on. So we can control that with the lift engines. But then using the main engines as well to control it. We, we need some thrust on the main engines. There we go, look. We're just coming down towards... So we're maintaining height now, we're down below 60 knots. Gently does it. It just takes time to slow down and stop. And you have to balance going between the main engines and the lift engines to make that happen. We're essentially in a hover now. Just pitching the aircraft around gently to control speed. Let's 
try and get it down on this flat area here. There we go. So it's not the easiest thing to control. So you can see the Pegasus engines have pulled around there to 90 degrees in concert with the lift engines kicking in. coming up to 100 knots and we disable the co-pilot mode and we're back to normal flight it's just closed the lift engines and we carry on our way it takes a fair bit of practice to get it right you know to do it smoothly once you get it down, it's actually not that bad. There's lots of instructions that come with the aircraft to help you guide you through that configuration and and the um, the procedures to follow. And like I said, there's lots and lots of assistance in terms of the autopilot modes. Just move the display on. So we're going to fly basically straight down this valley, and we could go into China Lake, couldn't we, instead of Edwards for a change? Though it's a very nice version of Edwards I've got though. So it came from Flight Sim.2. It's always worth a look. How are we doing on fuel? So the lift engines are running out. The main tanks, we've got lots. I'm sorry to say the wing tanks, not the lift engines. So it may be that we do a conventional landing when we get to Edwards. We'll see. I'm not sure how this aircraft works around um, pumping the fuel around and if particular tanks have to be, you know, well, particular tanks are feeding particular engines or not. So it may be the case that we would have to transfer fuel. There are buttons to do that in the cockpit or switches. Visibility is great though to be able to look around so easily. So we're going roughly the right direction. Let's go and cut through this gap here. So we're just coming up towards this uh, rock formation is opposite the exit of the Star Wars Canyon. The, the Jedi transition, as it's called on the map. So we're not going to fly it today, but 
it would be good fun to go down it super slow in this with the lift engines on but I don't think we've got the, the fuel for it really not without knowing the aeroplane better than I do at the moment Point it out as we fly past there. It's one of these canyons over here. There's the hill, so it's that one. So normally you would come down this from the other end, so you can, if we get some altitude actually, you'll be able to see it from overhead. So this is the, the Star Wars Canyon. See it? Snakes and snakes and it ends up coming out over here somewhere on the hilltop. So when you're coming in from the other side you can see this as a reference point. You come in on the right side of it and you fall straight into the valley. Or into the canyon I should say. Yeah, there's a couple of really steep turns in that way. Anyway, can't look at that scenery. Just trim the nose down a little bit. We're still climbing. I'm just watching the vertical speed here. Okay, so we're heading down. We've just gone past Panamint Springs. We'll overfly Trona in a moment, and then we'll see... Ah, uh, no, I forgot what the lake's called. Searles Lake is just before the turning point. Obviously we could go back to Edwards, where we came from. I think it might be good fun to go to China Lake. So Adam is just commenting in the live stream about the, um, I did a flight the other day in Papua New Guinea with the new Orbex scenery for the, um, the highlands in Papua New Guinea. That was good fun. The modelling of this aircraft is something else. Any builds built it, they've done a fantastic job on it. It really is just amazing, really. You know, even the small details that you wouldn't normally see if you look around the back of things, it's all modelled. It's wonderfully modelled as well. And you can't really see any polygons anywhere. It's a bit of a masterpiece, to be honest. Okay, so we're about... 30 miles out from China Lake now. So we'll head 
carry on down towards Selves Lake, which is just down here. And then turn out over the hills to get to China Lake. Is that a shadow being... No, it's not a shadow, it's just... I think it's a difference in the ground tile, isn't it? Yeah, it's a scenery difference. Oh, that's a shame. How weird. You can see it right across the landscape, look. Difference in the texture map. Okay, so there's Trona, I think we said it was called. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, Trona. And then there's Sells Lake. And then we skip across into the um, the flat area to the other side of these hills and you'll find China Lake out there. Let's pull the throttle off a bit and come in a bit lower. How are we doing for fuel? So the outer tanks are all empty. We're just left with the main tank now. Turn for China Lake. I think that's probably it, the buildings we can see in the distance out there. I would expect, or suspect, or maybe not, or is it this? We'll see when we get closer. So, what's the wind doing on the ground at China Lake? 110 degrees, 7 knots, so it's coming in from this side, so runway 08 would make sense. Yeah, I think that is the base. Or is this it? Is that just that? That's China Lake, I think. And then this is the airfield. Am I right? Maybe. <laughs> It'll become obvious when we're a little bit closer. Yeah, we're heading for the airfield now. Okay, so we want runway 08, which is the opposite direction than we are approaching from. So there's the runway. We want to go around the airfield and come back in. So 
so we'll give ourselves some turning room. And get the speed under control now. Down below 200 knots now. Let's just keep descending. At the moment we're just operating as a normal aeroplane. Obviously you can see the vectored engines are helping us to an extent. Let's bring the gear out. Open the lift engines. Gentle turn into runway zero eight. It looks like it's still working on lift engines, so yeah, it uses the tanks up from the outside in, by the look of it.
I'm just playing with the engines now to see what it does. <laughs> of course we're a lot lighter now than we were so we can take off almost without any you know with a lot more thrust left over So it's very sensitive on the amount of thrust you give it. enough fun and games. Let's go and taxi off the runway and go and park up. Ah, they closed the route there. Okay, we'll double back. Or not. Now, can we be crafty? Seeing as we're in an aeroplane that can do this. I think it just takes a few seconds for it to kick in. Yeah, look, it's rolled. There we go. So it takes a good 10 seconds for the lift engines to kick in. Just going to avoid killing the grass. They were going to cook the grass, though, aren't we? Okay. That was good fun. Should we go and We'll wait for the engines to spool down. It's mad, isn't it? They've even got strip lights, look. Oh, that's as far as we can go, apparently. I wonder if this switch is working here. 
apparently not. Oh, that's a shame. Anyway. Hopefully you enjoyed that. So that's the Dornia 31 E1 in this case, which was the experimental version. There are several other liveries and several versions of it. The, the only thing that kind of still mystifies me a little bit... Yeah, I guess this has vertical control, but it hasn't got side... No, rotational control, unless it's out here on the ends of the... Yeah, it makes no sense. Why would it have had such little rotational control when it's in the hover? But yeah, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Anyway, there you go. There's the Dornier 31. I'm going to leave it there, and I'll see you all again soon. Take care.